Hello all, uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. It's going to be Ask Me Anything. I'm Surya, co-host of this uh, meeting. Thank you all for joining this meeting. So what I wanted to do is kind of go over a few questions with Sarang. So Sarang is the program director. I wanted to kind of speak to him about this particular course, right? So Sarang, uh, when, you, when you started thinking about this coursework, uh, from a student perspective, why did you think a student should take this coursework? How will a student who is a undergraduate student or a person who graduated out of college or, and is looking for a job or person who is working in their uh, first or second year of work uh, wants to take up this course. Why did you? Why? Why do you think someone should take this coursework? Sure, uh, definitely. I think before I answer that, right? I think uh, there has to be a small clarification on what program program director means. See, my background, guys, is primarily in uh, uh, numerical simulations, uh, right? That in that includes primarily computational fluid dynamics. But I think I have a decent understanding of finite element analysis, multi-body dynamics, and so on. So um, when it comes to creating programs, the primary thing that Skilling looks at is industry relevance. And uh, uh, you know, in, in, in this industry relevance, you have to kind of keep into account what the job market is looking for at a domestic level. So within India, what are the job opportunities that are available? And outside, what are uh, out of India, especially if you're going for your higher education, what are the types of opportunities that you can expect, right? So the curriculum was designed based on that by talking to a lot of, uh, uh, you know, really experienced people, 15, 20 years of experienced people working in different uh, uh, EV companies across India. Uh, and, al and also that includes, you know, that includes really cool startups like Gator and Energy, right? So we spoke to, we had a discussion with the founders as well. And that's kind of how we create the program. So the primary reason why you should take this course, it's because it's extremely relevant to the job market in India and also if you plan and also outside India, right? Uh, we'll talk about outside India a bit later because there are certain variations, right? Uh, depending on uh, what your uh, academic qualification is, there are certain things that you can do and there are certain things that you cannot do. But again, most of your students in India, and I think most of you want to get into um, a career right after you finish this, right? So if you want to get into the EV space, this, the curriculum that we have is essentially what a lot of industry experts within India, I'm talking about popular entrepreneurs and, uh, and tech guys with tons of experience in this market, right? And that is the primary reason why a student should consider taking the courses because if I, I I can go on and talk about you know why a mechanical engineer should learn programming why a mechanical engineer should learn control systems but I think that's that's probably the second level of explanation right so the first thing is you know you're essentially enrolling yourself in a program that's designed by discussing with experts and entrepreneurs who are leading the field in India and usually majority of the colleges that you study, that you go to, you might not have this relevance, right? You might be studying a curriculum that's probably a few years old. That's the primary reason. The secondary reason is considering the job market itself, um, you know, there is definitely a huge focus on electric vehicles. In fact, you know, if some of you have attended my previous webinars on uh, how electric vehicles are trending, I kind of made a prediction based upon some data that 2030 is the year in which electric vehicle is going to boom a lot. And for some lucky reasons, it seems like that's going to happen. So there is a good amount of uh, information out there that suggests that the R&D work with respect to IC engines or combustion related devices used for transportation, right? When I say used for transportation, I'm talking about cars. The research in that area will eventually reduce because in the next 10 years, you will figure out cheaper ways to design motors and batteries. You will figure out ways to have much more reliable batteries. So it might be easier to put your money, uh, research money in developing your electrical components than IC engine components. So the industry will 
see that and they, that will essentially be a business decision they will instead of further optimizing an ic engine the industry can easily use a much more efficient battery pack and electric motor to meet emission norms and to meet uh, efficiency norms as well right it becomes an easy decision so when it comes to that in the next 10 years there will be a sudden shift in demand and we are kind of seeing that some of the students that interview with uh, companies that are doing ev right we see that our mechanical engineers the mechanical engineers that take mechanical engineering courses from skilling they get questions which are essentially from electrical and mechatronics aspects right so you you might not be surprised that when you go for an interview in the next one to two years in an automotive company they might ask you questions like hey can you tell me what a drive cycle is can you tell me what is the when when people say fast charger right what's the typical power input of a fast charger and why does why do a mecha, why does a mechanical engineer have to care about it in other words the focus the previously read the focus was all about ic engine right what's the power and torque of the ic engine that's typically what gets asked in an interview from that the focus is now shifting here's the thing what does an ic engine do well it takes chemical energy of the fuel and it converts into mechanical energy correct that's essentially the two mark textbook definition of what an ic engine is now what's a, now what's the equivalent in the electrical world well it's a battery pack the energy is again stored in form of chemical energy but the way it's converted it's not converted to mechanical energy directly chemical energy is first converted to electrical energy and your electric machine the motors convert this electrical energy into mechanical energy correct so suddenly your heart and soul of your automotive is now a electrical engineering component so when you go and sit for interviews i won't be surprised if this happens in like 2 3 months suddenly you will see feel like hey what I mean, I'm being asked a bunch of electrical engineering based questions, and I'm never prepared for it. And I think that should be the primary driver for you guys. And this is for people who don't think a lot, right? Now, some of you might have actually thought about this a lot. And for you, I think whatever we are doing right now makes sense. But if you are a typical mechanical engineer who, who doesn't get, who, who's not that exposed, who's just doing his education, you're getting decent marks, anywhere between seventy to seventy-five percentage. and you really don't care about how the world works right you are a simple person which is always good in certain ways uh, what you will actually see is the job market might be slightly unreasonable to you in the next two years because the demand is changing so much the industry requirements are changing so much and your academic curriculum is not caught up so you should essentially consider taking this course if you don't want to fall a victim of this uh, difference um so again to, to condense that one more time if you are a mechanical engineer with a decent gpa percentage you know anywhere between 7.0 to 7.5 70 to 75 percent right give up take in that range and you really want to get a core mechanical engineering job i think this is essentially a program that you should look at to see if this makes sense to you now now let me get into the technical aspects of it so why am i saying that a mechanical engineer has to learn these things right why do i need to have a learn i need to learn a i need to learn control systems so generally if you if you look at how uh, the vehicle development process works right at a at a much more uh, research and development level correct you can see that your car has way more electrified component components in it 10 15 years ago your cars did not have that much now what's going what now you can definitely see especially if you if you or your friend had purchased a car in the last 1 to 2 years the number of electrical subsystems in a car has actually increased tremendously and unfortunately fortunately or unfortunately to design these components there has to be a handshake between an electrical engineer and a mechanical engineer a great example and we can kind of do this as a q and a Uh, does anyone know what a battery management system is if if you know just type in and surya can kind of give me an acknowledgement if at least one answer is correct you guys know what a battery management system is no uh, are the majority answers no surya yeah heat management system uh, endurance 
See, that's it's, that's very interesting, right? I think the fact that many people are saying no, I feel is a problem here. Let me explain. So BMS is essentially a purely um, a component that an electrical engineer has to care about. But here's the thing: the battery management system essentially takes care of everything with respect to your batteries. Are the batteries temperature being maintained uniformly? Or is the is the coolant flow in the battery optimal? Um, you know, uh, am I am I charging the batteries correctly? And just to go a bit more technical. There is a concept called as uh, cell balancing, right? Your BMS takes care of it. But at the end of the day, when a BMS is designed, it, it essentially manages your battery, right? When a BMS is designed, the BMS casing is designed by a mechanical engineer. Usually, there's a if, the, if it's a smaller battery pack, usually there's a plastic housing. If you take Teslas, right? If you have Tesla, um, what they have is they basically have small lithium-ion cells. Now these cells are put into modules, and there are several modules that are put in a battery pack. Now within these modules, you have ethylene glycol, which is a liquid coolant, which is circulated. I believe the flow rate is roughly five liters per minute. The flow rate information is determined by a mechanical engineer, right? Because at five liter per minute flow rate, if the coolant is being pumped, then you essentially make sure that all the batteries, battery temperatures. Is homogeneous. So here, suddenly, a mechanical engineer has to understand why the temperature of a battery, of of the cells in a battery a pack or a battery module, has to be homogeneous. If you do not understand it, then you are not going to understand that you need a liquid coolant solution. Then, I hope you guys see the problem, right? And this is exactly why a mechanical engineer has to now. At least get a fundamental idea of uh, these components, and, and right? uh, that's something that uh, we are seeing seeing as well, right, Saran? So uh, when we speak to a lot of companies that uh, approach us to provide our courses to their uh, employees, right? A lot of uh, major OEMs nowadays, what they ask for is to train their existing mechanical engineers with electric electric modules. Say, for example, uh, Helping them understand ADAS, helping them understand controls, helping them understand, um, say, battery management system. So these are fundamentals of uh, electrification that, as mechanical engineers, the future is going to ask from a mechanical engineer. Right? In an interview, they will be asked these fundamental questions as well. So I kind of agree, and um, I definitely agree with that uh, because. Uh, i think it happened before in mechanical engineering right and it that's that's the another phase of it while we are focusing on hey mechanical engineers we are kind of you know i know that i'm making it sound like mechanical engineers now should all go and uh, transfer into electrical engineering department no that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that that's essentially that's becoming a prerequisite so you can actually be a very strong engineer by learning the electrical parts of it and also the mechanical parts of it correct So, if you look at the curriculum that Surya shared just a while back, you can see that semester one focuses on all these primary electrical engineering courses, right? And that is essentially going to give you the foundation. Now, remember, as a mechanical engineer, no one is going to ask you to develop or going to design a DC-DC converter, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know, DC-DC converter is a critical component. It is there in a lot of applications. Your your laptops, for example, have DC-DC converters. They are essentially used to convert one voltage level to another voltage level, essentially like a transformer, but way more efficient, right? So there are several DC-DC converters that are uh, that are found in common devices, which is purely designed by the electrical engineers and. Some students, right? They under, they they come to me and ask, "Hey, should I actually learn DC-DC converter design?" Uh, no, you don't have to. You don't have to. You kind of have to have a very functional knowledge of what DC-DC converter is. But but the thing is, you should have a very good a very good understanding of the entire electric vehicle architecture. For example, if I say that the battery pack gives you a DC voltage and you need a DC-DC converter, and then if I say that there is an AC motor, then you need to know that there has to be an inverter. Pack. you should have this understanding and that process should come immediately 
correct and if you are talking about okay i am using an ac motor or a dc motor there has to be a basic knowledge of okay how am i going to control the speed of it this is this is a fundamental knowledge that you need to develop and that's exactly what our first semester of courses are helping you and uh, when i say what when 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 there is a question like what does a student learn from this course the first course is primarily focusing on electric vehicle architecture and it's helping you think of electric vehicles from a pen and paper calculation here's a simple question right you are designing a two wheeler right say that you have a two wheeler you are essentially creating a vehicle that looks exactly like honda activa but electric the question is the question that i want to ask here is hey how big of a motor do you do i need if it is now say that it's an ic engine thing you would basically reverse the calculation right and you would essentially figure out a torque and power value correct hey i i need this much torque and i i need this much power if i have to carry a weight of so many people at 60 kilometers per hour so there are two concepts that you have already introduced you have rated power you have rated speed rated rpm or rated speed right essentially that means you also have rated torque you start working with these three numbers now here's the thing it doesn't matter if it's an ic engine or electric motor the parameters are the same any vehicle that you need that you build should have enough torque so that it can start and it should have enough power to go at a particular speed as simple as that that's what the first course focuses on the second thing is focus on controls um what do i mean by controls a simple example is your ac thermostat right but the idea is how do you program when there is an input and output right and then there is an input signal and an output signal how is the output determined based upon the input and how is feedback given from output to input that's essentially what we call as controls this is used in coolant pumps this is used in cabin hvacs uh, this is used in uh, pretty much any application that you can think of right uh, things like cruise control where where the is where the car has to tell the system that okay i i i reached a set speed and now if i am increasing increasing my cruise uh, controller to go 5 km per hour again extra the system has to basically do the entire thing again give me feedback and get to the set point as soon as possible but in a safe manner correct this is essentially controls and like i said since mechanical systems are more and more integrated with an electrical control system because there is a lot of advantage of doing that a mechanical engineer has to inevitably if you want to stay in this domain of electric vehicles or automotive engineering having that knowledge is super important <coughs> now okay. that being said i kind of wanted to ask another question sorry i not ask another question but answer one question a lot of students you know for example at skill center and also while doing the online classes ask me that hey uh, i'm I, i really suck at electrical engineering concepts and i'm a very bad programmer and you are asking me to take 3 to 4 electrical engineering courses in my first semester how will i succeed now here is where i kind of want to you know make make it clear that hey see i know that we have courses that are sometimes much better than what much better than what a typical university offers right because we have had a lot of students say that but one thing is we are we don't operate we don't follow rules that sometimes universities follow unnecessarily the reason why you are taking these courses helps in two things for example it it could be it could be a fact that you don't get program it could be a fact that you know any any explanation about simulink any explanation about uh, open loop closed loop systems pid controllers is just going on top of your head whatever information we are saying is going into one year and is coming out of the other year it's perfectly fine in fact you might even fail in one or two subjects but it doesn't matter unlike a college we are not going to say that okay you have failed all right bye we are not going to say that when you fail a particular class it essentially tells you that with a lot of coaching and supporting you are not getting that subject which means a you need more practice or b you are not passionate about it and believe me it is extremely important uh, it's extremely useful if you are if you are able to rule out areas that you are not passionate about because you don't have to wait five you don't have to spend five years in a career and then figure out that hey i am not passionate about this you are figuring that in, that out in two or three months and what is the second benefit 
if you do a poor job in electrical engineering courses i'm not saying that you will but say that it happens you have a whole series of mechanical engineering specializations in the second semester the story if you want to just pop that up yeah wow. you have a whole series of mechanical engineering specialization which you can pursue now even with the rudimentary knowledge in the electrical engineering right the first semester and if you specialize in your second semester and just you have to pick one domain where you do well and we will be able to figure it out based upon our interaction with you in the first semester and that's why this is an amazing solution if you do electrical engineering also well then that's like double advantage you have a candidate who has decent gpa can do electrical engineering very well can do mechanical engineering very well this candidate has future proof his career for the next 5 to 7 years easy and and sorry uh, so okay. other thing that we i wanted to add upon is uh, when you take up the electrical engineering courses and and we have seen uh, this trend right so a lot of mechanical engineers are kind of uh, afraid about programming and are afraid about electrical engineering but something that we also witness is when they get into the coursework when they start understanding a few initial concepts when they start working on the challenges and the assignments when they go to from one step 1 to step 2 to step 3 and they understand okay they have the ability to understand the concept and implement the concept and work on projects that's when that confidence starts increasing and we make sure one one thing that sarang said is we while our syllabus is better than colleges our way of handling students is not similar to colleges because uh, in colleges if you don't know or if you fail the test it's fail the test right so over here it's every week we basically go through your uh, progress so on a daily basis we kind of see what your progress is we understand where you are lagging we reach out to you and see okay here is where you are lagging and this these are fundamental things that you need to fix right if you are say for example in controls you are not able to comprehend a particular topic what we do is sit with you help you understand that topic until you understand it well and so that when you go out of the class you basically have a clear understanding and you can do the challenge so once you start doing the challenge things automatically fall into place because now you are solving industry oriented problems by yourself once you have do that your confidence in the coursework will increase and you will kind of move forward so that's the whole approach with all the co courses that we take and what we see is with semester 1 uh, when we take the same approach a lot of students who initially say i'm i do not know if i can do this go through this course and do that course and that's when it kind of kicks in right and uh, and that confidence kind of rolls over into semester 2 and where they do really well in cfd fa or design track and take it forward 